testimony to the world that Jesus died and he rose again. Hallelujah. And so it's going to be a great service next Sunday. Well, I've got a good word for you today. I think, oh, that's very weak. Amen. Well, those of you who don't know, we have a culture that when I tell you my, my, uh, my title, oh, I haven't got there yet. That's when you shout and rejoice because of the word of the Lord. Amen. Okay. <laughs> it's me. I want to shout before the time. I want a prophetic shout. Amen. I've, I've uh, entitled my message today, Jesus, my confidence. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of uh, John 1, verse, 20, verse 29. And uh, John 1, verse 29, it says, And the next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. The greatest miracle, the greatest blessing is Jesus. Meeting Jesus. Seeing Jesus. Receiving Jesus. And having your sins washed away. Amen. Jesus said, What will it profit a man? To gain the whole world, but lose his soul. Thank God, and when you get baptized, not only do you get cut off from the world, but you gain Christ. And that's why we can say to live as Christ and to die as gain. I was just talking in the, in the pastor's lounge with Angela. Where are you, Angela? Where are you seated? Over there. And I was saying to her, isn't it amazing as us Christians, many times when times get tough, you think, man, I'm finished with this world. Jesus, why don't you just take me? How many of you do that sometimes? Amen. Just take me. And I thought, how wonderful that is. Because we have lost the greatest fear known to man, the fear of death. That no matter how tough it is, you, for you, you think it's, it'll be a, a blessing. Jesus, just take me. Amen. I'm looking forward to it. Hallelujah. And don't push me too hard because I'll just suddenly leave. Amen. I'm not scared of dying. Glory to God, because I have found Jesus. I have found life. Hallelujah. And um, he has dealt with sin. And, you know, in Israel, they had one way of dealing with sin, and God gave it to them. He said, listen, you need to take two goats. That's what he told Aaron. Take two goats. One is a goat for sin, and one is a scapegoat. Speaking about the twofold uh, salvation that would come through Jesus Christ. And I want to read that for you in Leviticus 16 verse 8. Then Aaron shall cast lots for the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat on which the Lord's lot fell and offer it as a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement upon it and to let it go as the scapegoat into the wilderness. And so this is, this is the great doctrine of impartation. And so what the priest would do is he would slay the one goat and offer the blood for salvation as a sin offering. But the other goat, the priest, will then after have sacrificed a bull for himself, he would, he would then get the priests around him and they would take the other goat, the live goat, and they would lay hands on that goat and they would impart the sins of the nation on that goat. And it was called a scapegoat. And then that goat will be released into the wilderness to go and to never return, signifying that when he takes our sins on himself, he removes it as far as the east is from the west. And we bear it no more. Hallelujah. Can I have my musicians on the platform? And uh, that, that is the great doctrine revealing our Jesus who is to come. That he himself took our infirmities and bore our diseases. Hallelujah. He says there in... in Le Leviticus 16, 22, the goat shall bear on itself all the iniquities to an uninhabited land, and he shall let the goat go into the wilderness. The goat bore it. I want you to know that Jesus bore your sin. 
The moment you believed on him, there was an impartation. There was a release of your sin. And we said, Jesus, we believe that you are my scapegoat. You are the one that takes my place in judgment. And that word bore is the, the Greek word uh, nasa. No, it's a Hebrew word, nasa, which means he will lift it away. He will bear it away. He will remove it at a distance. And I want you to know that the moment the blood of Jesus is applied to you and the moment you call in the name of Jesus, all your sins are borne away. You bear it no more. There's complete forgiveness in the name of Jesus. We don't live and every day we live in condemnation and every day we live with our sin. No, our sins are washed away. God doesn't deal with you as a sinner. He deals with you as a son, the redeemed of the Lord. Sons and daughters of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Heirs and joint heirs in Christ Jesus. The righteousness of God in Christ. As I spoke last week and I, I mentioned there that Jesus took care of all your shortcomings. He is the propitiation. He deals with your shortfall. And he has taken it upon himself. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for this wondrous salvation that there is in Jesus. Salvation, this is something about salvation. Salvation is free, but it's not cheap. We freely receive the greatest price that can be paid on the face of the earth, the life of the Son of God who gave himself and shed his blood. There's no greater price than the blood of of Jesus. Can somebody lift your hand and say, thank you, Lord, for your blood. Your blood shed for me, the price paid. It's freely received, but expensively paid by the Heavenly Father. And I am free. And that's how we are saved. We believe that I am free. Can you just lift your hand and say, thank you for your blood, Jesus, by which I am free. Hallelujah. My sins, oh, the blessed of this glorious thought my sins not in part but the whole is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more praise the Lord Praise the Lord, oh my soul, it is well with my soul. My sins, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sins, not the part, but the whole. It is now to the cross, and I bear.
I bear it no more in Jesus' name. And I want to tell you, God bless you, may be seated, that if you bear your sin no more, you bear the curse no more. You bear the indignity no more. You bear the bondages no more. You bear the power of that sin no more. The blood of Jesus washes it away. And we are free. Somebody say amen. Now this morning I've got a few people to pay uh, tribute to the Lord and bring a testimony. Brother Leo Heathcote, are you here this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. You need to be quick because I'm just going to move on. Where, where's your hand? Hallelujah. Maybe he understood that he has to give testimony and went with. But uh, Shantai Duncan, Shantai, come here. Dear Shantai, I had the privilege of leading this young lady to Jesus. And something wondrous happened in her life. And we asked her to come and give a testimony and tell you what the Lord has done for her life. Bless you, dear Shantai. Tell us your testimony. You can take that also. Yeah, yeah. I always get so emotional when I have to stand up here, but it's really just the overflow of emotions, you know, and just the blessing. So I have suffered with anxiety uh, almost my entire life. And um, after coming to church and being saved, I've now experienced a peace that I cannot explain. Um, no medication, no doctor could help me or heal me. And um, the Lord has. <laughs> and I'm just so blessed because every morning I'll wake up and I've got this energy and this spirit that just keeps going. And I can do it on my own. I didn't know how strong I was in his name and by his word. And I just feel so empowered on a daily basis. And I'm so thankful to everybody here, you know, the leaders, the pastors. They've just been such a blessing in my life. And this church has been such a blessing. And I'm so, so grateful. And I'm so sorry for being so emotional. But it's really just touched me in a way that words cannot explain. Thank so you. Shantai, what does the name of Jesus mean to you? It means everything. I mean, that is the one name I say every day, all day. Amen. He, del he delivered you from the anxiety, from the fear, Absolutely. from the torment. It really was. It really was a tormenting experience. You know, it's, no doctor could help me. I mean, they would prescribe anxiety tablets, relaxers, antidepressants, and I knew that I didn't want to go down that road. So I was either going to reach for the Bible, the Word of God, or I was going to allow those medications to consume me, and that was then going to be my life. And I was like, I'm not doing that. Mm. And um, I just took the leap of faith. Mm. Amen. And you took the pull, the gospel. Absolutely. <laughs> wow. And now you are free. I have been set free and it feels good. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Thank you, Shantae. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Uh, they can't understand how you can just call on the name of Jesus. In the world, you have to have medication and uh, depression and you have to have counseling. And No, there's one name. It's a name of salvation. It's a name of great work. Amen. Can I ask this morning for uh, Marina? Marina, come Marina, come and tell us what the Lord has done in your life. Come on, let's thank God for her and what He has done in her life. Amen. We see God do some wonderful things in your life, Marina. Come and give us your testimony. Bear with me, please. I'm luck. Just stand a bit closer to the mic. I haven't done this since I was at school, so this is like... Hey, that's fine, Marina. <laughs> You're telling what Jesus has done. That's yes, fine. true. Right. Right. Um, sex abuse for me started at a young age. Um, when I got to school... Oh, sorry. 
when I started school, I wasn't very academically inclined. So sports for me was my escape. Um, I became hateful, angry, rebellious. Um, when I got to high school, in grade 10, I was expelled because I was just not good enough. After that, I went to college, which, yeah, it was just a joke for me. I couldn't excel at anything. Um, in 1987 was my first job and I was excited because I thought I'm going to go overseas and my plan was go to the States. That was, you know, what I wanted to do. Um, unfortunately, my boss was an alcoholic. He was verbally and sexually abusive. Always drunk. When we got to work, he was drunk and abusing all the female staff. Um, 1988, at the age of 20, I tried to commit suicide. Um, I took an overdose and was in hospital for, I think it was about five, five days or so. And my family came to see me. They couldn't understand what, why I was in hospital, like what was going on. So I couldn't tell them. I just made up... You know, I wasn't happy with the family, but it was due to sex abuse. After that, I just moved from job to job. And each boss was the same. They're just sexually abusive. So I turned to alcohol, and every day I would drink from morning to night. I would sit at my desk. In my coffee cup, I would have my gin, my brandy, wine, whatever. Um, yeah, even after I got married, I had my three kids. I was still, I would just drink all day, every day. 2015, my daughter Paula asked me to come to DCC. And the one day I was sitting in the aisle and I looked around and I was like, Everybody was so happy. And I said to God, I want to be like that. I want to be like that. Amen. So a few months later, I gave my heart to Jesus. I got baptized. And in 2016, I started backsliding, and I turned back to alcohol. Same thing every day. I would drink. And September 2019... I got to my desk at work and I said, I can't do this anymore, God. I'm, I can't. I hate, I really hate the person I've become. And I couldn't go on. And I have to think back now to when I was last happy. I was never, ever happy. I hated. I hated myself. I hated socializing. Even to go out, I couldn't. I just, I couldn't. I had to mentally prepare myself. And yeah, so on the 11th of September, I actually got retrenched. And I was sitting at home, I would plan my suicide and drink every day. I would plan my suicide as to what I wanted to do, how I was going to kill myself. January 2020, I returned to church. And I just had this desire, I had this burning desire that I want to know God, I want to learn more. And I would learn, I read, read books, I would go on live stream, and while cleaning the house, I would do praise and worship, and I just, I had this ignite, something happened in me. But each day was an emotional ride, it was, I would be crying, and yeah. So, yeah, God started working inside of me, every dormant thing inside of me was being shaken, and I was, I felt alive again, if it makes sense. And on the 20th, 11th of March, you said to me, you said, you need to be more disciplined in yourself. And I think that was my trigger. Because then lockdown happened. And I, I was spending more time in the Word. And the one night, um, I went onto Facebook and Prophet, Prophet Richard was online. And he gave me a wonderful word. He said to me, <sighs> he said, you need to be you need to start forgiving people in your life. 
And yeah, it's something I've never forgotten that. And he said, that's what was keeping me in bondage. I was, I hated everybody and what they had done. So after, after 32 years, I can say that I have stopped drinking. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry, I'm just, yeah, I, I just, everything started to change. And yeah, where I am now, I just want to serve God. And he is my new love and my first love. <laughs> And yeah, while writing this, I just want to read Psalm 37, verse 24. It says, your mistakes don't define you. And that's something I just remind myself every day. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Hallelujah. I was just thinking about the fact, Marina, that no matter who you are, no matter what kind of prison the enemy has tried to build around you, Jesus has set the captives free. Yeah. And if you'll call on his name, he'll do the same for you. Amen. And it was just a decision that you made, it isn't was, it? Yeah, I, 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 I want to know Jesus now. Yeah, I just made the decision. I just, I was tired of being this alcoholic. I lost sheep, and I yes. just, I said, that's it. Yes, yes. I just want to. Just reach that point now. Enough is you. enough, yeah. Hey. And the moment you say enough is enough, that's you'll it. meet the more than enough. Amen. His name is Jesus. Can you tell us what the name of Jesus means oh, to you? My Savior, my Savior, my everything. Yeah. My first love. Isn't that an incredible name it's when powerful. you say that, Saviour? It. It's powerful. It's got it everything in it, doesn't it? It does. Absolutely. Amen. So. And I want to say to each one of you watching by live stream, by YouTube, Wentworth, Finland's the bluff here, there's room at the cross for you. Jesus made a way for you. And that name, if you call on that name, you shall be saved. There's deliverance in his name. As we spoke, we spoke about the fact today that Jesus took your sin on himself. Every eye closed, every head bowed just for a moment. My dear friend, I want you to know that there's a Savior and his name is Jesus. And the Bible says he is personally and intimately acquainted with you. And you might be there right now sitting and saying, but I went too far, but it is too hard. Let me tell you, the blood of Jesus reaches the highest mountains and the lowest valleys. There's salvation in his name. And each and every one year that says, Pastor Johnny, I need Jesus. I need to make a choice today. I want to make the choice. I'm tired of sin. I'm tired of this prison that I'm in. Can you pray for me? I want the blood of Jesus to set me free. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand all over this place. I want to pray for you. Even you watching at home, just raise your hand as an indication. Jesus, set me free as well. I believe in you as my Savior. Thank you. Thank you. See those hands. Wentworth and Finland, just lift those hands right where you are. Father, as hands are raised before you. We thank you that you're the wonderful Redeemer, the great Savior. Now, one last time, if your life's not right with God and you want to make right with Him, just raise your hand. I'm going to pray with you. Some of you are backslidden like Marina did. That happens. But the moment you say, now, Jesus, I receive your forgiveness. Forgiveness brings deliverance. Forgiveness and the blood of Jesus breaks the curse. Forgiveness and the blood of Jesus washes your sins away and gives you a brand new beginning. Now, all of you, raise your hand. Just raise it one more time. Father, as hands are raised, I bless them. I bind you, you foul spirit of deception. I bind you, blinding devils, trying to stop them right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I release the revelation of Christ in these lives. I want you with your hand raised to say, Lord Jesus, Today I give you my life. 
Today I turn from sin. Today I ask you to wash me, cleanse me. I receive forgiveness because I believe that you are my scapegoat. You took my sin. You died on the cross. You shed your blood. And after three days, you rose from the dead. And now, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Father, I bless every life, all those who raise their hands, those that I see and those that I don't see. I lift them before you, and I thank you now for your blessing on them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Can you say hallelujah? How many of you are grateful for your salvation today? We serve a wonderful Savior. I want to ask, uh, is Patricia, Patricia, you are here? Come and tell us what happened to you, uh, dear woman of God. Patricia is a policeman. Uh, po you don't say policeman, you say uh, a policewoman, captain. Uh, amen. And uh, so, Captain Fantastic. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, she said she'd like to give a testimony as well. She didn't say she wants to. She just gave us her testimony. And I said, Patricia, come let me stand you a little bit more forward so you're in the light. I want you to just tell uh, very shortly what happened. You were talking about how, you know, you had in your heart to go and uh, visit Uncle Sam. Hello, Uncle Sam. Uh, will you stand, Uncle Sam? How old are you today, Uncle Sam? Ninety. Ninety-four. Four. Hallelujah. We love you, Uncle Sam. And until today, he still fishes. Amen. And it's still a wonder. He still wins souls for Jesus. We, Uncle Sam, you just bless me, your life and your testimony, your zeal for Jesus. But, you know, Uncle Sam told you that he'd like to see your, your father. Uh, last week, Sunday, I was in church and my dad was not sure. He wasn't feeling well and... I met Uncle Sam at the back. You, you know who her dad is, that Jason? My dad is Jason, who is on a wheelchair, and he comes to church. He's got lung and, and heart problems and a whole lot of other illnesses. Uh, he's in a hospital bed today, and I believe he's healed. Amen. A very quick testimony. I'll be doing injustice to my DCC pastors, from Pastor Fred Roberts to Pastor Nelly to Pastor Johnny Krabler, to Pastor John Torrance, if I don't testify of what the good Lord has done for me. Amen. I learned from Pastor uh, Fred Roberts a few years back that you don't need to stand only in church and pray. You don't need to stand in a meeting and pray. Go and look for the smallest corner of your house. Get down on your knees and ask God for what you want. Amen. When you wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning, he said, don't put the TV on and watch ETV. Take your Bible and read Amen. and find the promise that you want. Amen. Pastor Nelly, a few years back, back in 2003, asked us in church during the offering, who wants to believe that you will get, that the God that you serve will give you more than what your father, your earthly father owns and Amen. more than what your family can own. Amen. Friends, today I stand here. I own more than my dad, more vehicles than my family put together. Like Pastor said last year, you're going to own cars. People in our church are going to own cars that you won't find parking for anymore. 2020, COVID-19 is not a year I'm going to forget. Not because I've lost loved ones, because my God has given me more than enough. Amen. Pastor Johnny, hey. I have, I'm the proud owner so of like, three. So like rural, you know, when lockdown happened, suddenly you had nothing, you lost everything. You're I sitting thought at home that in a heap, you're hungry. Huh? Fortunately for the police, I, we worked throughout <laughs> lockdown. I even went to the extent of saving people's lives that were COVID-19. I carried my aunt 
in my hand. Mm. And people were saying to me, but how can you do that? You know you're going to become COVID positive. And I said, this body belongs to God. Hey. I'm not going to get COVID-19. Mm. I'm not going to be positive. Mm. She came out of hospital and I carried her and she was still unwell. I went and fed my uncle, made sure my uncle eat every day. He was also COVID positive, but I never got it. I went for tests three times in this year. Mm. People in my office ended up with COVID. I never touched it. Right. It never touched this body because it belongs to the most high. Amen. Three weeks back, I sent a message to Pastor Pat. I said, I'm going into a hospital because doctor suspects that I have osteoporosis, which is an inherited family disease. I came to church that Sunday wearing a belt around my waist. And I, when Pastor Pat knelt down, I knelt down at the back. I felt a rushing wave go through my spine. I went into the corner there. I pulled out that bench. Yes. And I said, God, this is not, this body belongs to Jesus. I'm not going to be positive. I'm not going to be osteoporosis positive. Amen. Doctors took me into hospital. They did every test. And he says to me, there is nothing wrong Christ. with you. <laughs> Last week, Sunday, when Uncle Sam said to me, Patricia, I'd really like to see your dad. I took my dad for the COVID test because he was going into hospital for his annual checkup. Driving home, he says, let's go visit Uncle Sam. While sitting and talking, we were talking of Pastor Fred, we were talking about Pastor Nelly, Pastor John Torrance, Pastor Patricia, and Pastor Johnny. And something inside of me said to me, you need to bless this man. He's like your grandfather. I went into my car. I pulled out a few notes. I don't even know how many. I rolled it up. I handed it, to, walked back into his house, I handed it to him. He asked me, what's this for? And he said, you buying fish too? I said, no. <laughs> Consider it as God asked me to bless you. Tuesday morning, I walked into my office after being on sick leave for a few days. A friend of mine that I haven't seen for four years walks into my office. He says to me, Patricia, can we go for coffee? I said, okay, but let me just tell my boss. We went down the road and had coffee. The man says to me, Patricia, I want you to get a quotation for a carport. I said to him, brother, I have the quotation, but I'm not happy with it. One guy quoted me 30,000, another guy 27,000. He says, okay, there's your down payment. Ah. Go and get the carport done. Pastor, it didn't end there. Thursday afternoon at home, I met another client at home. I sat with him for 45 minutes. I'm not a lawyer. I'm a police officer at Devon Central Detectives. I sat with him, and I gave him information as what to do with his life. He stood up. He opens his wallet, greeted my children, saying he's leaving. Opened his wallet, and he placed 2,000 rand on my table, mm. and he walked out. He phones me yesterday, he says to me, you had a builder there, I saw. What, are you, what do you want to do? I said to him, I'm putting a sliding door to close my balcony. He says to me, send me the quotation. The quotation for that and another door that I want came to 10,000 run. Friends, after giving Uncle Sam whatever it was, I didn't get 10% back, Pastor Johnny. I got a hundredfold back. Because when my sleep breaks at 2 o'clock in the morning, I do not put the TV on. I get down on these knees. And I tell God what I want. And it gets done. In 2020, I've renovated my house 120 square meters with porcelain tiles. I pulled out a brand new Fortuna. Last week, I told Uncle Derek, Pastor said, don't drive a car, don't own a house when you're 70 and 80. Drive it while you're still young. Mm. 
I said to Uncle Derek, Uncle Derek, I want a Mustang. Uncle Derek, I now want a Supra, a Toyota Supra, <laughs> which is 400,000. I went to Toyota yesterday. And believe me, I'm waiting for 2021. Hey. Because this God that I serve has never let me down. My dad is now seven, turning 76. He's lost family members that lost their lives before the age of 70. He's the only living person in his family generation that has passed the age of 70. You said to him, Pastor Johnny said to him last year, Jason, you're going to live for 103 or 111 in the hospital. And let me tell you something. I believe, after I spoke to the doctor yesterday, doctor says to me, your father will live another 10 to 20 years. Amen. His heart, there's Amen. nothing wrong. And I believe, even though he has a lung problem, that he's still going to walk because of the God that we serve. Amen. Thank you, dear Patricia. Thank you. Hallelujah. And Jesus means the world to me and my two children. I might not know every song they tell me I sing off tune at home in my bathroom. But when I want to praise God, nobody and nothing stops me. Amen. His name is wonderful. Amen. Thank you, dear Patricia. There's salvation in his name. And here's the thing. He broke every curse. Can you lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Your blood washes me clean, breaks every chain destroys every bondage and one of the bondages that he destroys is infirmity the bible says in matthew 8 17 that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses now lord today we place every sickness on you every disease every infirmity you bore it we take it off the church. We take it off the redeemed. And we place it on Christ. And we thank you that we bear it no more. In the name of Jesus, let sickness be broken. Let infirmities be canceled. In the name of Jesus, I break every curse of disease from every saint. In the name of Jesus, and we declare, He has set the captives free. He Himself bore your infirmities. And by His stripes, we are healed. We receive your salvation, body, soul, and spirit. Thank you for life and abundance in your church. In Jesus' name. Everybody say, by the blood of Jesus, I am free. Hallelujah. For thou art Lord. Come and stand and sing with me. Those of you at home, live stream, YouTube, Wentworth, Finland. Stand, sing to Jesus. Raise your hands and glorify Him. For a moment, His name is Savior. Oh, oh God.
up your holy name this week we'll exalt and praise you and testify and make you known and our Lord we thank you that this next Sunday we'll bring to you the greatest gifts we can bring the souls of our loved ones we will come we will rejoice we will bring them and you will save them and we thank you Lord they shall be baptized and your name will be exalted your kingdom shall be extended Father, we thank you for multitudes in the value of decision that will come to the knowledge of Christ. We declare today that the South shall be saved. That every man and every woman and every boy and every girl will hear the gospel and will be saved and redeemed and come to the name, the wondrous knowledge of your name. We bless you, Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, we ask all people that's going to be baptized next week, uh, please to give us your names. Those in Wentworth, uh, Finlands, those that are here, just go to the information desk. Those of you by live stream YouTube, just email your name in, let us know, phone us. Or respond on our WhatsApp, the DCC Family Chat WhatsApp. Uh, give us your name that we can... So we can just prepare how many people. Because if I'm baptizing a thousand people, I need to start exercising my arms. Amen. Hallelujah. But uh, we're going to have a great time next Sunday. Well, I've got one more thing to say. Sunday was great. But Monday is better. God bless you. Love you as you go.